Hello everyone and welcome back to my SR-71 flight in X-Plane 11 and this time I am taking off from Dubai International Airport and headed for Kathmandu in Nepal. As you will have already noticed, there is no in-game audio and I'm actually doing this commentary in post-commentary form because the audio that I recorded during the video got all crackly and had issues. I think it's because x 11 itself was taking so much processor power that the program that my voice was getting run through uh, didn't have enough buffer. So I can't use the audio that I had originally recorded. I do remember at this point, I know the ripples in the sand on the forward portion of the landscape that we see and then it was smooth on the closer portion. And I was wondering whether that was a seasonal thing because they were both photo scenery. And so I was wondering whether ripples in the sand were a seasonal thing. Maybe they are. But anyway, here we are uh, crossing this peninsula on the Arabian Peninsula and then heading out uh, along the southern coast of Iran. I decided to just stay uh, in international waters, let's say. Uh, not for any particular reason except there isn't much scenery anyway and this is actually more or less the straight line distance to where I'm going. Um, here we are approaching the border between Iran and Pakistan. Uh, not much to see here because it is the stock scenery. And actually I feel it's really doing the area of the service because I'm pretty sure there's more going on here than just what we see. Uh, especially on the Pakistan side because they, they've got a lot of waterways and they're actually coastal national parks. So I assume those coastal national parks have some wildlife of some kind. But it's interesting, the border is actually a straight line, even though you see these rivers from this particular bay. This bay is where the, the border is, but it's actually a straight line in between all those rivers, right at the center of the bay. That is the border, instead of following any of the landscape features. And I found that curious. You normally borders, when they can, follow the landscape, but not in this case. It does follow the landscape further up. It follows uh, mountain ridge and other things. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I pointed out at this point that that was supposed to be a national park. The area that my cursor is sort of hovering over <laughs> is supposed to be a national park. So there's something missing here. But anyway, you know, what can you do? At this point, I was uh, planning to fly over Karachi and New Delhi and then uh, head along the Himalayas to Kathmandu in Nepal. It's a long flight and I actually, I didn't have a full fuel load. I neglected to check my fuel at the start of the flight. And that, that will cause problems. I had to really manage the fuel properly and we will have some issues down the road. But here we are approaching Karachi in Pakistan and beyond it is the delta of the Indus River. But Karachi I think is a bigger and more spec well not spectacular really, but uh, certainly bigger. There are some areas uh, down there that are looking barren which are actually quite populated. In general the cities tend to be much more compact in this part of the world, they're not as spread out, and the buildings are much smaller. So even though it's a, it is a highly populated city, it um, doesn't actually take up that much space, I guess. But anyway, there is the Indus River and its delta. Unfortunately, the landscape was definitely having issues here. It didn't look anything like Google Maps or any map. And uh, there, uh, uh, you can see on that island the blocky textures, and so. I resolved at this point to uh, find some photo scenery for this area to make it look correct. But yeah, the coastlines weren't looking right. We have obvious issues. So yeah, uh, more work needs to be done. Unfortunately, we started to encounter heavy cloud cover as we entered India and especially as we approached Delhi. And so I had to descend. I was going to descend to uh, take a look at Delhi anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's quite formidable. And it's not so much the clouds, but the, the visibility range at the lower levels that's the problem. So you can see here, the visibility, uh, probably realistic, I mean, you know, it's probably realistic, but it's not great for sightseeing, certainly. Yeah, uh, and th this is more or less at Delhi. You can see on the map the cluster of airports there. But uh, yeah, it's just no way of seeing anything in particular, much less spotting where the downtown area is. So I decided to give Delhi a miss. We'll have to come back some other time when it's not so 
so low in visibility. I don't know. I don't know how bad it is as far as smog and stuff is concerned in this area. But anyway, uh, up we went and on to the Himalayas. Uh, we're basically flying between the Yamuna and Ganges rivers, and I'm headed uh, to a town called, or a city called Dehradun. And Dehradun is basically right on the dividing line between all the little rivers that would flow into the Yamuna River and all the little rivers that flow into the Ganges River. And uh, yeah, so an interesting spot. The thing about the Himalayas is the rivers don't actually go into the mountains very far before they hit the line that divides rivers going one way and rivers going the other way. So it's actually, it actually seems quite a bit more scenic because of that. Very dramatic. Anyway, so I'm descending again, trying to get below the clouds, but it's like no luck. So ultimately, I have to go into the settings and I have to adjust that visibility range. I decided not to mess with the clouds. The clouds are fine and it'll uh, help the look of the mountains by quite a lot to just keep the, uh, keep the clouds there. But that visibility number, I wanted to scoot up. Uh, to something a little bit more useful for sightseeing and this is what it looked like at about 20 statute miles. Yep, and we're headed straight for Dehradun. As we approach the foothills of the Himalayas you can see the rivers just streaming out um, very quickly and it doesn't take very long to get to their source basically. I mean it's uh, not much of a mystery. Uh, so here we are approaching Dehradun here and uh, to our left are the rivers they're flowing to the Yamuna River, and to the right are the rivers flowing into the Ganges. And it's basically as simple as that. And uh, they don't go very far into the Himalayas before they meet their source. So we are now turning towards the Ganges side, uh, so that we can continue along, following along with the Himalayas. And uh, here to our starboard side, our right side, is the Ganges River and the city of Rishikesh. I believe is what we're looking at right there. Altitudes are still fairly moderate here, um, maybe higher than many other mountain ranges, but still you can uh, tell from the altitude reading in the upper right, upper left-hand corner. Sorry, uh, that uh, that we are still in the lowlands of the Himalayas, uh, though it's still already quite dramatic. It gets better. It gets better. And so I continue on. You can see on the map the uh, browner areas. We're still over the green, and so this is fairly low line. The browner areas are where things really get tall, uh, 20,000 feet and more. And you can see some of it poking out of the bottom layer of clouds now. And my computer is struggling here because of I think the trees and the clouds in particular are really putting a strain, uh, rendering all those little trees and then the clouds... Um, and of course at our velocity we're going reasonably fast here. So around here is where the software started to introduce crackles in my voice because there wasn't enough latency, not enough buffer. And uh, yeah, well anyway, visually it's quite worth it. Uh, though I wish I could get a few extra frames here and there. And here I'm turning further north towards Nanda Devi National Park. I'm not entirely clear which peak is Nanda Devi. Coming from this angle, uh, you would think it's the prominent one that will be right in front of us. It seems like a li likely candidate. But there also is another one, uh, so the one currently to our right seems like a likely candidate. But there's also another peak further in to the National Park that uh, looks somewhat more impressive. So not enti entirely sure which one is Nanda Devi itself. But uh, this is looking pretty good and obviously poking through all the clouds. And um, uh, th we're, we're passing the one that uh, I first thought was Nana Devi, but now to our right you see another peak that's very prominent and uh, seems rather impressive. So I take a closer look at that. Um, you can see a glacier flowing from it very, very slowly. And yeah, so this might be Nanda Devi, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, this is the proper Himalayas, all tall and everything. I'm definitely happy with the way this looks. 
Yep, that's looking quite spectacular, and it's it's good with the clouds. The, the clouds were are a nice touch. But there's that glacier. I believe we're currently north of the divide between the rivers, so this the this glacier would probably feed something um, in China. Is what I figure, uh, possibly flowing out through the Brahmaputra River or possibly flowing into the Yellow or Yangtze Rivers, that kind of thing. But anyway, we are exiting the Nanda Devi National Park, and I am basically headed to the Annapurna Conservation Area in Nepal. We're uh, pretty close to the border between uh, India and Nepal here. And going into Nepal, uh, take a look at the upper left-hand corner where the fuel flow is. That's the fourth row. Right now, it's chugging along, but the engine number two uh, suddenly quits out. Uh, now you'll see that there's zero fuel flow to engine number two. And I was already sort of a little bit off course, and now it's a little bit more interesting to handle. I don't have rudder trim. I have aileron trim and elevator trim. Uh, parented on my joystick, but I didn't actually have rotor trim. Uh, that might have been a little bit handy right now, but I didn't bother with that just yet. I was interested to see if uh, it was like a fuel flow problem, like for some reason the fuel flow wasn't getting to the right engine. And so I checked to see whether there was some sort of switcher, uh, a fuel selector switch. Sometimes that happens. Maybe I have to pump the fuel into the center tank or something. Maybe I've been switched to the right tank and uh, drain that first. But And of course, the fact that we started off with a light fuel load caused a bit of a problem. Otherwise, we'd have uh, far more fuel and I wouldn't have been worried about that. It could be th just that the engine just quit on me. And later on, uh, there's another development that makes me wonder exactly what was happening with the engine. But here I had to uh, turn in order to... Uh, correct my course and it was a tough turn. Uh, we're banking at a 45 degree angle and we're barely able to make this turn with just the one engine going but it still works uh, even with one engine it's still flyable and uh, right now I still I have the engine number one on high thrust anyway um, not after burning but still uh, pretty high thrust so it's possible to handle it and at lower thrust, it'll be much easier. If we were just gliding, it'd be trivial. You'll note, uh, I, I had said, you know, there was a later development that made me wonder what was going on with the engine. And that later development is once I idle the first engine, fuel flow does appear to go to the se second engine at an idle rate. So we can idle the second engine, we just can't push it further than idle for some reason. Here I am lining up at the airport at Kathmandu. It was actually a long flight on the one engine. It took quite a while, especially since we had to go slower. Uh, but we did eventually get to Kathmandu. Uh, at certain points I was looking at other airports, but none of them had a long enough airstrip for me to be satisfied that I would be safe landing there. As it turns out, I, I wasn't really safe landing at Kathmandu airport, as we'll soon see. But here I am lining up rather fast, but... Um, yeah, I was hoping to survive that flaw. And here we are, you can see the runway. Yes, uh, quite fast. Uh, this runway is about 10,000 feet long, so we have some space in theory. Uh, in theory, And uh, right now uh, we are idling both engines, so there's not an imbalance right now. So that's good. But I'm coming in here and you'll see a little bit of a problem up ahead. First of all, the photo scenery texture for the runway is not lined up with the actual texture of the runway and that threw me off. But the second thing that threw me off was the fact that the runway is going uphill. And that made me panic and that led me to descend a little bit faster than I intended. Actually it was only 800 feet per second but we were also going very fast horizontally. So uh, the simulator decided I had crashed and that, that hill basically uh, did the rest of it. So, well, um, I got the Kathmandu, but uh, this is very disappointing altogether. I, I consider it a conspiracy of a uh, number of faults here. Uh, boy, the crashes are dramatic in X-Plane 11. This is the one non-realistic thing about the whole 
simulator. But anyway, uh, I think I'll leave it to you guys. I, I'm going to assume that you guys want me to just take off from Kathmandu Airport and continue to flight. But if you go like, yeah, no, that is dead, that's fine by me too. Um, but yeah, here we are. We, we probably need another SR-71. Let's say I survived this. So yeah. Anyway, uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.